thank you very much. Um, so, so I'm going to be talk, I'm going to be speaking about making digital assets mainstream. Uh, to talk about that, we're going to first look at history. Uh, history has a habit of repeating itself, and I think we can learn something. Uh, we're going to talk about network effects and how network effects accelerate. We're going to talk about Bitcoin, uh, trends and opportunities. I'm going to really focus on branded currencies, which is what I think is one, one of the areas that I think is really going to push mainstream adoption. Um, and then I'm going to just explain a bit more about what we do and uh, share some resources. So I am the, the CEO of the GDA group of companies. We are a group of companies focused across the blockchain and digital asset capital market. I'm also the, I was also the first uh, blockchain developer at TD Bank in Toronto, and I'm the managing director of the XDB Foundation, uh, which is uh, focused on pushing the adoption of the digital bits blockchain and of branded currencies. So as far as history, if we go back just a thousand years to Fifth Avenue, which is the main street in New York City, uh, I, I know that we're not in a room, so I can't really see anyone, but it's very difficult to find a car. There, there is a car here, but everyone is using horse-drawn carriages. And only 13 years later, on the same street in New York, it's basically only cars. So it took 13 years for uh, it to be basically 100% horses and a single car to being 100% cars and a single horse-drawn carriage. If we look at a more recent case study of mainstream adoption of disruptive technologies, uh, you can look at a concert before 2015 and there were no cell phones. And essentially overnight, uh, concerts started to have cell phones. So over time with technology, the adoption curves of disruptive technology has gotten steeper. So whereas it took decades for the telephone to reach mainstream adoption. Now applications like uh, Angry Birds are reaching a billion people in under a year. So let's, uh, let's talk about network effects a bit because ultimately digital assets are just networks uh, of people that believe in the economics and governance for the digital assets, for the value that's uh, stored in its network, but the people in the network, the nodes of the network, the developers, the investors, the entrepreneurs, the uh, advocates, ambassadors, uh, educators, Everyone in a network has value and uh, the value of the network is uh, directly proportioned is just about the square of the participants in the network. An interesting example of this is uh, the creator of, a, of the chessboard. I, I like this story and, and that is that uh, the creator of the chessboard, when they created the chessboard, was uh, asked by was asked for a gift um, for having come up with uh, a fun game, and the creator said that he didn't want a lot; he just wanted a grain of rice on the first square, and every day he wanted the amount of rice on the next 
square to double. And that seems like it wasn't going to be a lot of rice. It seemed like it was going to be a good deal. And the first half of the rice um, was not that much. It was maybe the size of an elephant. But uh, the second half of the chessboard uh, is where things begin to get truly exponential, which is uh, this, we are entering the second half of the chessboard for digital asset adoption, also for disruptive technology adoption in, in general. Uh, and on the second half of the chessboard, with the doubling of the piles, uh, by the end of the board, the pile would be larger than Mount Everest. Uh, so anyways, for fooling the king of the time, the creator was killed. Um, but uh, as, as I mentioned, network effects are getting faster. It took the airline airlines uh, 68 years to get to 50 million users, and it took Pokemon Go 19 years to get to 50 million users. So now let's chat about Bitcoin. Uh, and ultimately, uh, as, as mentioned, Bitcoin is a speculative asset that only has value because there's an increasingly growing network of more and more valuable participants that believe it has value and perhaps will increase in value. So are not trading it and are trading their fiat currencies on a day-to-day -day basis instead. Uh, but over the past year, we've started to see an unprecedented amount of institutional attention. We've seen public companies like MicroStrategy allocating almost half a billion dollars of their treasury into Bitcoin, uh, becoming the first publicly traded company to do so. Uh, MicroStrategy is also actually now... Uh, leveraging their balance sheet to buy more Bitcoins with debt, uh, which is also a first. Uh, we're seeing private companies like Square allocating 1% of their corporate treasury or $50 million into Bitcoins. Then we're seeing uh, the biggest institutions in the world like F Fidelity advising uh, their clients to allocate one to five percent of their portfolio into bitcoin the largest asset management company is like stone ridge purchasing uh over a hundred million dollars in bitcoin um and paypal which has over a hundred million or which has hundreds of millions of users announcing that they're opening up digital assets so the every day now, the doubling effect of the network with groups like MicroStrategy and PayPal becomes more and more exponential. So what is driving this sudden institutional interest? So in the public markets uh, or with tr traditionally, uh, investors would have 40% of their treasuries in fixed income in like a bonds that's generating them 3% per year or something to beat in inflation. But now most of the world has 0% interest rates or negative interest rates. So bonds and treasuries are no longer a no risk uh, investment. Inflation is also likely to continue to increase as federal reserves around the world, print money and, uh, and increase the monetary supply due to additional stimuluses from COVID. <coughs> and finally, with geostability, uh, it's becoming increasingly questioned whether the US dollar will hold its uh, dominant uh, position as the global reserve currency with uh, countries like Russia starting to price their oil in RMB, um, it presents a huge risk uh, to, the, to US dollar denominated assets. Uh, so Chamath Palihapitiya explains it well. 
He says the conventional approach to investing for retirement was 60% equities and 40% bonds. If your goal was 10% a year, this mix got the job done in the 80s and 90s and 2000s. Not anymore. Now bond returns zero. So does 40 go to zero with it? What do we replace bonds with? One idea could be to increase exposure to alternative assets. Crypto, cars, art, baseball cards. Most people have zero to 5% in alternatives. This allocation will probably change if bonds remain at zero. It's just math. If alts go up to 10 or 20% of people's portfolios, uh, cryptos represent a much better asset class uh, and potential return on investment than, uh, than other alternatives. Crypto also has amazing diversification um, and is very uncorrelated to other assets uh, in, traditional invest in, in traditional people's uh, portfolios. Oh, let's not talk about that. Uh, we also are seeing now some of the largest investors in the world publicly investing into Bitcoins. Um, so Drucker Miller says he own, owns Bitcoins. Um, Rothschilds uh, Corp has invested into Bitcoins. So now let's talk about some trends and opportunities uh, and specifically brand stable coins which I see as a opportunity to accelerate mainstream adoption of digital assets without people even knowing it by, uh, by uh, doing the things they would normally do at the brands they would normally do them at. So a branded stable coin. And I believe that uh, although Bitcoin is, is uh, a potentially a uh, very valuable asset. Bitcoin is super speculative. Uh, it's not backed by anything except for the network. So uh, one person could look at Bitcoin and they could say that it's going to a million. One person could look at Bitcoin and say, well, actually the network is very small. Uh, it's going to be replaced by whatever um, the technology is still, is still new. I don't trust it yet. So uh, stable coins that are usable by enterprises and issued by the brand um, are, are going to start to be used by everyone, I think, by transacting with the brands that they're already transacting with. Uh, and what this will allow for, for the brand, for the, for the brand is to um, use their treasuries uh, to and, and allow people to transact with with you know, their their branded co coins that are backed by their treasuries, uh, where there will be um, much less transaction fees than transacting with fiat currency, and where the brands will start to be able to develop a stronger relationship with their ecosystem. So the consumers, the merchants, the, uh, the other brands and, and the enterprises that um, they're working with. So um, branded stable coins will uh, provide brands with more of an understanding of where their ecosystem is uh, is, is transacting and to be able to reward them for that, uh, to be able to uh, also incentivize the growing of their ecosystems and bringing new people into the ecosystem, whether it's, uh, you, you know, bringing your friends to, to buy coffee at Starbucks or whether it is uh, getting, a, getting a friend to... Uh, set up a, a, a new air miles uh, or whatever existing uh, platforms that people are already using uh, will just be on the blockchain. Um, so this will uh, improve the economics of the loyalty industry and also the 
perceived value of loyalty points because it will also make points interoperable. So your Starbucks point, you'll be able to use for a flight for like for a, for a flight reward or, or for a hotel reward or for, uh, for wherever. Um, and then finally, uh, heightened additional market intelligence for the enterprises. So, um, so digital assets are difficult to get fast adoption because uh, although they present so much value and in, in, inherent value, in my opinion, as well as potentially much better economics than uh, what people are used to, people are used to, to fiat currency and, and paper money and people are re resistant to change. So I think what is really going to accelerate adoption overnight is by integrating digital assets into the programs that uh, billions of people around the world are already using. So they'll be using digital assets um, that have additional value to their to the traditional uh, locked loyalty assets. Uh, and it'll be in a format that they're familiar with. Um, so bringing brand ecosystems and network effects to the blockchain and digital asset world um, brings enormous growth very quickly to, to digital assets. Uh, and it has only just started. So, for example, uh, imagine a company like WeChat that powers $10 trillion in payments annually and has almost a billion users. Uh, if they integrate a uh, stablecoin into their application. Um, finally, this allows a uh, stable, stable asset mixed with a branded, uh, a, a branded program that unlocks hundreds of billions of dollars of locked up value because currently you don't even know if you have $5 left on the Starbucks gift card necessarily because it's been in your wallet for so long and you just haven't been able to track the the payments or be able to use it for something else if uh, you no longer go to to the store that you have the, the gift card for um, and which is much more flexible than uh, than traditional loyalty points um, so as as far as uh, the the market intelligence it provides for much more touch points than ever before and a much more seamless uh, way to to transact with brands um, with a lot less costs involved than uh, than, than traditional uh, fiat currency as well um, it can provide banking to billions of people that that don't have banking and it can start to be used to generate financial profiles create a credit history apply for a loan stuff like that so uh yeah, bringing the blockchain stability, uh, brand ecosystems, and market intelligence, I think, is is one way that is going to really push mainstream adoption in the next year. Uh, so now, just a, a quick overview of, of our company. Um, we're a financial institution focused on emerging technology. Uh, we have offices around the world. Um, our team has. Uh, a fair amount of experience. We can talk more about that, but I don't need to go into it. Um, and as mentioned, we have a portfolio of uh, an ecosystem of businesses that touch the blockchain capital market um, and uh, have experience at family offices, leading financial institutions and uh, venture companies. So I just made a couple uh, resources. 
But uh, yeah, that is that is all. Now I'm happy to answer any questions. <laughs> <laughs>